a warm welcome from APJ Consultancy and School Skies. Uh, this is Dr. Pravina Jagdish from School Skies, and it's such a pleasure to have you all on board. And we will strive to make the session as informative as possible. Uh, it's such an honor to have Dr. Ajit Prasad Jain with us today. He needs a very little introduction down here in the south, has been on various boards, has been the chief nodal officer for CBSE, an ex member, governing body CBSE Delhi. And he has conducted various inspections and aided in affiliations of numerous CBSE schools. He is a national awardee and has helped thousands of students realize his dreams. He is a great technology enthusiast and he's brought in many uh, initiatives in technology during his tenure in Bhavans. And more than anything else, he is very ardent about sharing his knowledge with peers, and that's the reason he is here with us today. So welcome you, sir, on board, and it's a pleasure to have you. And with that, I'll just put in the agenda of the meeting, which is going to be on the trends in CBSE, basic IT infrastructure, and Microsoft initiatives. Just one small request to the audience. For the benefit of all, uh, we would request you to raise your queries on the chat option, which is at the right bottom corner of your screen. And sir or I would try and answer it as a if that's not possible, we will collate your queries and try to address it by the end of the session. So with that, over to Dr. Ajit Prasad Jain, and thank you for joining us here today, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Praveena. Hi, friends. This is Dr. Ajit Prasad Jain, the former principal of Bhavan's Rajaji Vidyashram, Chennai. I'm very happy to connect with all of you today through this uh, a webinar. I think this is the first of its kind for all CBSE school principals to address them and discuss with them through a webinar. I appreciate your interest shown in the webinar. And today's uh, agenda already Dr. Pravina has informed all of you. It is about the recent changes and trends in CBSE and also how to make your school as a futuristic school. I mean, futuristic school means, you know, the communication is the major uh, medium which plays a vital role between the school and the stakeholders, uh, I mean, the parents. And whatever be the medium of instruction or medium of communication between the school and the parents, the parents love to hear more from the schools. And it is very difficult for a principal to uh, see uh, more than uh, 10 or 15 visitors per day because he or she is always uh, busy with the administrative and academic work. So any school uh, which is uh, most popular only by way of a good rapport between the school teachers and the parents. And here we are through the school skies we try to create a paperless school um, and we have tested it and it came out successful. And the school where I was working at Bhavan Sajaj Vidyasham was the first school to become the paperless school and it was congratulated by the then head of schools, Microsoft uh, India in two years back. So I would like to pass it on the information and share the good knowledge of how to make your school a paperless school uh, and technology based school that is why the complete session is and also i am planning to have one webinar per month on different issues current issues prevailing in cbsc and among the cbsc schools you know the cbsc has brought a lot of changes and during this year and uh, since the NEP 2015, National Education Policy 2015 is rolled out and it is a point of discussion across the country and especially chapter number seven and eight, which are most concerned for the schools and school management and the principals. I hope you can go through it or if you're not gone through it, you can go, go through it now section seven and eight and maybe our next webinar maybe on chapter seven and eight on the 
a new education policy 2015 so let me take you through a small uh, ppt uh, which is going to discuss about what is the changes in cbse and how to make your school a uh, paperless school with the help of school skies and this is a small introduction about uh, myself i started my career as a teacher in the year 1985 and became the vice principal in 1995 and became the principal in 2000 and got the national award best teacher national award and received it from the then president dr a p j abdul kalam in the year 2005 and the moment i became the uh, best teacher awardee my management joined me as senior principal and from 2005 i was working there and in 2018 march i took vrs and i want to share the knowledge what i gained all my 33 years of service in the cbc school uh, in various capacities started as a teacher and then a vice principal and then a principal and then a, a cbsc um, evaluator and then ed examiner and also a part of writing team in uh, manual for laboratory mathematics laboratory for class 9 and 10 and i also member in the core committee in the revision of class 12 mathematics syllabus and a member in the core committee in framing the new sample paper in for class 10 mathematics so i thought i should uh, share my knowledge with all of you with this intention we we uh, arrange for this webinar and uh, after the uh, vrs my vrs i have started this dr apj education consultancy uh, which is uh, helping the cbc schools in the following areas anything everything for cbsc whether it is a problem in your application or a problem in your extension and how to get the additional subjects approved by cbsc and also uh, how to apply for direct admissions because there are a lot of uh, uh, queries from principals across india because almost everybody knows me as ajit sir from chennai so jr from jain from chennai and minimum 5 to 7 calls i get every day pan india uh, addressing or asking for various uh, doubts in cbsc matters so i help in with them and then implementing technology to create a paperless school and also how to make your school with uh, microsoft based uh, applications and then school safety doing an audit uh, of school safety and also a concept of CQ audit, complaints quotient audit. You know the CBSE has changed the bylaws with effect from 1810 2018, giving all the responsibilities to the state government and take only an extra two for existing for new schools and an extra three for the existing schools. And how to go about it, and whether your school is uh, satisfying all the conditions laid down either by your state government or by cbsc application department so the cq audit cbsc compliance quotient audit which is a successful venture of my, of our consultancy and the last 6 months i have done more than 27 schools not only in tamil nadu but also in maharashtra and karnataka and chhattisgarh and you can visit Uh, my website www.apjedu.in for more details and apart from this we are also having another concept called emc educational management consultant how you are having your architect for your school and you are having a, a chartered accountant and auditor for your school or a gsc consultant for your school so the same way to 
address all the concerns and the issues facing out of CBSC. I introduce the concept of EMC, Educational Management Consultant. It is not only pertaining to CBSC matters, but also it is pertaining to the issues between the school and the parents, the issues between the school and the students, and how to make use of my expertise. I give my suggestions and valuable directions to schools to come over difficult situations as and when it arises. So it is called EEMC, Educational Management Consultant. So the, both the brochures, that the CQ audit brochure and EMC brochure, both the brochures are available in our know, website. You can download it, you can go through it. And those who are interested, you can write to me at uh, ajit.apjedu.in. And you can see the contact details in the website. Click the contact details, you'll get my mailing address as well as my email address. And I'll try to address it within two working days. And also academics. I, we do a complete academic audit of your school, observing your uh, classes and with the subject experts from for different subjects and give you a complete analysis of your teacher's strength and weakness. And that is called academic audit. So we do academic audit, we do compliance question audit, and also we help the schools to set up your computer lab and implement uh, all the ERP solutions with the help of School Skies, which is uh, a proven uh, software ERP. And I could say, uh, if Dr. Praveena and Dr. Jagdish is agree with me, uh, it is my brainchild. And then last seven years, there are a lot of value additions to it, right from the application or your pre-KG or LKG, till the students leaves the school, uh, TC. Every activity of the school is brought under web and there is a greater connectivity between the school and the parents through, the, uh, the, through this medium. And there is no need of any uh, circulars to the parents. There is no need of any diary, for example. I have disowned the diary for two years in the school sending everything only through uh, our uh, uh, app. It was a successful one. So to some extent, we can contribute to our nation by making paperless school. And then coming to the recent trends in CBSC, let me start with uh, learning outcomes. The CBSC has come out with the learning outcomes based on the paper issued by NCRT, and it is available in our CBS website as well as in the NCRT website. What are the learning outcomes of a child after studying from class one to class eight? Subject-wise, they're given what are the learning outcomes, what is expected after the completion of class one, and how much a child should know in language one, and how much a child should know in uh, English, and how much the child should know in mathematics, and how much the child should know in environmental studies for class one and two, because there is no science, there is no um, social studies in both class one and class two. And though some of the state governments have come out, and there is a recent uh, judgment in Madras High Court, by the Madras High Court, that the child in class one and two should study only three subjects, English, language, and mathematics, and to some extent, the CBSE has overcome it. And I think the CBSE has already challenged it, uh, keeping in mind the document released by his, uh, NCRT learning outcomes for class one and two. And then experiential learning is the theme for the new academic year 2019 and 20, with the aim of focusing the academic energies on developing the child's innate ability of learning to learn. It's expected the principal ensure that all the teachers in the school adopt it. Parents familiarize with this methodology at the parent-teacher meeting or through discussion with your child and give feedback to the school. Experiential learning is nothing but what the child is going to experience when the child is going to be in the school during the CR 
and what are the learning outcomes all that is going to come under experiential learning and then our education from class 1 to 10 which is another area where cbsc has given emphasis and as a principal all of you will agree with me that our teacher and the physical education teacher always complains in any of the staff meeting that Uh, the children are not at all interested in our class, and even some of the our own colleagues of uh, handling other subjects used to ask for the our classes to complete the portions. So always the our teachers are having an inferiority complex that they have been omitted or they have been given less important by the school, by the by our own colleague, and by the children. So to come out of this. the cbsc has come out with the art education made it compulsory and the board recommends all forms of art whether it is visual art or performing arts in the form of education as well as integrating this art education with the academic subjects then sports and physical education you know the present generation is lack of physical activities they sleep in a ac room they live in a ac room they eat in a ac room and they come to school in ac room and rather in some of the school they sit in a ac classroom there is no sweating from the child unless they sweat at this age they cannot perform they cannot shine in their in their later ages so keeping this mind the great saying sound mind in a sound body the cbsc has come out with sports and physical education made it compulsory every class one period per week so it is a challenging factor because we are already tied up with so many activities and with this 40 periods or 45 periods so we are going to allot five periods for the pt how i am going to complete the portions for the examination that is another question lingering around in everybody's mind but we cannot say no to cbsc's instructions so it is our duty that we need to follow the instructions of cbsc making pt compulsory per week one class per day one, one, one period and then for class 11th and 12th there is no change in that and the only thing is they made it very clear that cbsc do not have any fixed uh, group combined uh, subjects it is up to the schools to make any permutation and combination and give five subject to the children and anybody would like to have one additional subjects they can have one additional subjects uh, that is uh, not mandatory but you can opt for additional subject six subject but passing in the sixth subject is not compulsory out of six subjects if the child is passing any five subjects then the child will be declared as pass so cbsc has brought a lot of changes in 11th and 12th and also in the examination pattern and uh, introducing internal marks for all the subjects from the academy year and then the compendium of courses after plus 2 cbsc has brought out a circular form or a document which is giving the details about various uh, courses available across pan india after completion of class 12 and artificial intelligence which is the talk of the town talk of the nation and talk of the global artificial intelligence as emerging as a front runner in the curriculum media and uh, microsoft is also has given a uh, good circle uh, curriculum to cbsc whatever the curriculum rolled out by cbsc last year for class 8 and this year for class 9 for which microsoft has given uh, all the benefits and they have suggested the topics etc and this now currently the microsoft is going to come out with how to implement the artificial intelligence in the schools 
what they told me was when two weeks back the representative of microsoft met me in my office they are going to choose 50 schools across the country and implement this artificial intelligence program of microsoft in the schools and shortly i will come out with the ways and means how you can apply for your school you please keep visiting my website uh, regularly in, uh, in uh, regular intervals and we will come out with the circular how the cbsc how the microsoft artificial intelligence uh, course will be introduced in your school and modify assessment and evaluation pattern and you know the cr this year the cbsc has brought out lot of changes in the evaluation pattern and making foolproof system and uh, uh, making that uh, evaluators more vigilant when they are correcting the answer papers so they would like to give the error free results and for which 20 marks has been air mark for school based assessment in class 10 and class 12 uh, and uh, the 20 marks how we are going to give that also they come out with the detailed circular and you must have, some of you must have attended uh, the workshop conducted by CBSC, redefined or remodified uh, assessment system. And then coming to two levels of examination in mathematics in secondary classes for the academic session 1920, where the children are going to take their examination in March 2020, which is a welcoming move. Earlier there was uh, level mathematics in class 11 and 12 some 10 years back um, keeping part a as compulsory for science group and uh, commerce group and also humanities group and uh, part b for science group and part c for commerce and other groups and then later they have removed that also now they have come out with two levels of examinations in class 9 and class 10 and there is no change in the syllabus. There is no separate syllabus for low level mathematics or the standard mathematics and the uh, higher level mathematics. The syllabus is going to be the same. The textbook is going to be the same. And only the question paper pattern is going to be changed. And it is especially for class 10. They are going to uh, give two paper. One is for basic mathematics and the other one is for uh, advanced level mathematics and a child who is, who is opting for basic mathematics he cannot apply in class 11 for science group they can go only with a group without mathematics and a child which is going to go for higher level mathematics they are only eligible for joining the 11th standard which is having Mathematics as an elective. You may ask, suppose a child has decided to go in for the loyal or mathematics in March examination 2020, but he wanted to go for a group, science group with mathematics, then how the child can move? The answer for this will be the child has to appear for the higher level mathematics in the supplementary examination, which is going to be held in the month of July and he has to pass in that examination, then he can join 11th with the mathematics as a main subject. So these are the two major uh, development the one CBSC has brought in the examination in class in mathematics. One is the basic level mathematics, other one is the higher level mathematics. I'll make it very, very clear. There is no two different syllabus for both the examination. The syllabus is the same, textbook is the same by NCRT, only two different question papers and the CBS is working out how the blueprint will be. Very soon it will come out with the blueprint for basic level mathematics and higher level mathematics. Then you can uh, go through it and if you have any doubt in that, being a mathematics teacher and I was the um, subject expert for mathematics for the southern region for more than two decades, I can able to help you. I can able to conduct any kind of uh, orientation program for your group of uh, uh, schools or for your Sagodia 
can write to me separately. And then exemptions and concessions to be extended to the persons with the benchmark disabilities. The circular has come out very clearly and you can go through the circulars in CBC website. And another new concept of hubs of learning, apart from the Sagodia School Complex third, now CBC has come out with hubs of learning and they have identified the lead collaborator, uh, some of the principals, and every lead collaborator has been assigned with the, or given five schools geographically closer to them. And if you are not a lead collaborator, and if you have not received any circular in the month of March from your center of excellence or from your regional office about the ups of learning, you can today itself, you can write to your COE or to your concerned regional officer to which uh, lead collaborator your school has been affiliated to. Because all the CBC affiliated schools, every school has been alerted a lead collaborator. And to my knowledge, not more than five to six schools has been assigned to a lead collaborator. And the last month there was a orientation program for Southern Region lead collaborators at Chennai where uh, our uh, Dr. Joseph Emanuel, the director of academics addressed them. And I think I saw this in some of the um, Pan India WhatsApp groups, the PowerPoint presentation about the ups of learning. And also they made it very clear uh, I do not know how many of you are uh, office bearers of your Sagodias in your area. They made it very clear that the Sagodias cannot interfere in the activities of the observed learning. See, the activities of the observed learning are mutually understand between the lead collaborator and the schools attached to the lead collaborator. They have to sit together and they have to chart out the program for the whole year, whether it is a academic program or it is a, a sports program. So it is not only for academic purpose. The ups of learning is meant for the overall development of each and every school. A lead collaborator school, whatever they have been chosen and uh, um, they have been allotted five schools. They have to communicate with them. They have to interact with them and they have to share with them their good practices. And the same way the member schools can share the good practices, the best practices among the um, ups of schools. So this is the concept of ups of learning. And uh, you may ask, sir, do you mean to say that because of the introduction of ups of learning, the concept of Sagodia has been diluted or has been withdrawn? So to my knowledge, the concept of Sagodia has not been withdrawn, but it will be there. But that will have, the clusters will have 20 schools and whereas CBC wanted to make it a little smaller group so that the interaction will be more. So therefore the ups of learning, five schools, it starts with the uh, academic exchange, common question paper for 10th and 12th, and also uh, you can have your own uh, um, sports program among all the five schools. This is the concept of ups of learning by CBSC. Now, Shiksha Vani is another uh, project uh, which has been launched by CBFC, which gives all the question papers and all the academic materials. And then, you know, the website. Every CBFC school should have a website which contains a lot of information about the school, about the teachers, about the salary, etc. And uh, the forthcoming slides. I'm going to tell you how the school skies uh, is able to uh, satisfy all the norms by CBFC. And then the fee collection in the school should be only through wire mode. There is no cash collection and all the uh, fees to be paid to the school is also only through RTGS or through check by generating the chalan. And then the transfer certificate which should be in the CBC approved format. And the CBC approved format will be available in the CBC website, or it will be available as an appendix in the examination bylaws. Do not have that one, or if you wanted to know whether 
this present your transfer certificate form is the approved format of CBC or not, you can scan it and send it to me. I can go through it. I can suggest you the changes what has to be made. Or if it is already as per the CBC pattern, uh, approved uh, board, then I will immediately respond to your uh, mail stating that, yes, your transfer certificate is as per the uh, regulations of CBC. And now, uh, as I told you, the CBC Complaints Quotient Audit, which covers the following areas, administration, God-centric evaluation, student-centric evaluation, parent-centric activities, and then general evaluation of the school, and then IIT-related activities. And you know, now the CBC has come out with the new bylaw, where it says, which is a very, very challenging uh, uh, area, where the school should have one computer lab per 800 children. For example, if a school is having 1,400 children with a higher secondary, the school should have three computer labs. Two for class one to 10, and another one for to 11th and 12th. Because the CBC allows only one computer lab for per 800 students. Therefore, if a school is having, for example, 1,400 children, so first 800 one lab, remaining 600 is another lab, and if you have 11th and 12 computer science or IP as your relative, you should have one more lab. So you should have three labs for 1,400 children. So you can multiply if you are having 3,000 or 3,400 or 4,000, some schools are having 5,000, some schools uh, are having uh, 7,000 in UP I have seen. So now we have to recalculate based on the CBSE's new affiliation bylaw, and we have to make necessary uh, changes. And it is a very, very difficult situation, I know, because finding a room and making all the efforts is very difficult. But what to do, CBSE has come out with this, and they are very, very, if you would go through the uh, questionnaire or uploading your uh, application either for extension or additional subjects. The IT related subject itself is goes into two pages, uh, which is time consuming as well as a uh, lot of uh, money involved in that. So uh, IT related activities also we are doing, we are doing an IT uh, audit also, and we can help you to uh, make your school paka in all the uh, CBSC uh, complaints uh, as far as the IT related issues are concerned. And then we are doing the comprehensive evaluation of schools, as I told you, uh, academics as well as of the administration. This is a separate uh, comprehensive evaluation, including your hostel. And then basic IT infrastructure, I already explained to you what exactly uh, the meant on IT infrastructure and IT initiatives, making a school. Um, introduce online application for LKG and set up an online testing center uh, and introduce online leave application for the students and teachers and introduce RFID based attendance system. If you want to have um, face recognition system also for attendance, we can do that also and introduce online issue of bona fide certificates and Microsoft Office 365 for students and parents and introduce Yammer, a two-way communication between the school and its stakeholder. And this Yamar was a very, very successful one at Bhavan Sarajaj Vidya Ashram. And it was a two-way communication. I will tell you how it works. Suppose, for example, in class 1A, you have 40 children, and there are seven teachers. So all the seven teachers and all the 40 parents, or maybe 80 parents, both the husband and wife, and the principal, vice principal, and the admissions primary, all of them will be a part of this particular group. And the Teachers can uh, type the message as if they are typing in your WhatsApp or in SMS and give information about uh, today's uh, assignment and uh, even details about the test, etc. And all the 40 parents can see and they can also respond, they can also raise queries. I know it's a difficult task to keep a watch uh, 24 by 7, whether the paid teacher is, uh, any, any parent is raising a query, the teacher is. Uh, answering to it or not as an administrator. But I'll tell you, it will give a, a very good name and fame 
and it could be a benchmark for your uh, or POS for your uh, uh, school. And it was a very successful one by introducing the Microsoft Office 365. And uh, all this, whatever I am telling you now, all these are given by School Skies in their software ERB. And another interesting factor or welcoming factor here is all these are based in a cloud-based server. There is no need for a server to be installed in the school. It is all cloud-based server. We ask how safe is a cloud server. It is 100% safe. It is password encrypted, hosted on Microsoft Azure, which you know Microsoft is a well-known uh, company. There is no failure. And then there is no installation or no maintenance secured from the school side. Uh, school skies will take care of everything. And there is a high reliability and the performance and 0% downtime and data loss. And uh, you may say, sir, I have a server and I have intranet. The nodes are connected from different uh, locations, from different uh, staff room and uh, also different um, IT labs. Uh, what is the problem? Why should I go in for a uh, cloud-based server? Because here there is a security issue and the intranet gathered everything in one location which accommodates more space. And uh, if there is a uh, some cyber attack, or there's a virus attack for your particular server, then your entire data of last 20 years or 15 years is lost. And making, um, remaking the entire database is very, very difficult. Therefore, it is always better to have a cloud-based server and uh, our data will be saved. And also nowadays, the intranet is becoming absolute. Now coming to the various features in school size, technology everywhere in every single sector, as I told you, uh, right from the uh, application stage and then admission stage, and then converting the admission into an admission register, and then making the parents to pay online the fees, uh, except everything and then allotting the students to different classes, different sections, everything is uh, possible in school skies. So that is why we said go paperless, go digital, make a mark and your school will be talked about by the parents and the public in general. So school technology is evolving quickly. It is a centralized school information system and parent networking is very high and mobile notifications through WeChat and classroom updates about the uh, assignments about the forthcoming tests, etc. And it is 90% of the parents are not engaged with the schools or teachers. Nowadays, the parents, earlier we used to send circulars, they don't have time to go through circulars. Then we started sending SMS, they don't have time to go through the SMS. Now, when I introduce the Yamar, when I ask the parent, why don't you see the SMS? Sir, why are you sending SMS, sir? Nobody's seeing the SMS. Why don't you send in the Yamar? So even if one parent is uh, answering, uh, raising a query, if the teacher or the principal is uh, giving the answer, again after some time, and the same query is being raised by another parent, it is not necessary for the uh, principal or the vice principal or anybody else to answer it. Any parent can cut and paste the answer given by the school or a teacher earlier, and the parent, the new parent can be able to understand the uh, answer for the query, what he has raised. And uh, it is simple. Uh, it is student info management, academic insight. Academic insight, I mean, the teachers are teaching whether the parent wants to know whether the particular person, lesson has been completed or not. So the teachers have to mark it is in progress, it is completed, etc. So the parents are able to find out exactly what is going on in the school instead of calling the other parents and then asking them and the other parent will say no that age is like that only there is no class regularly going so a lot of gossip will happen to avoid all this make everything online then you can go through academic insight through your um, through your mobile itself there is no need for you to go and sit in front of your pc and log into your uh, um, student login or parent login and see and uh, teachers tool, they can send information to any individual parents 
uh, or any individual side or a group of students. And these are all the various features available in the ERP. There is books to bring, fee management, bona fide certificate online, and then the uh, academic analytics uh, report card, online admission, and RFID attendance, and chart box, and uh, very dynamic website. Once you sign up, they'll do your website and they'll keep track of your website. And then lesson plans, I already told you, you can print your own ID cards. There is no need to find another vendor. And uh, this is about various uh, activities, uh, homework posted. The teacher, the principal can see, or a uh, vice principal or the administrators can see today how many assignments have been posted by the teachers, how many homework has been posted by the teachers. Is there any note gone to the parents about uh, incident what has happened in a class or any um, disciplinary action has been taken, whether it has been intimated to the child, parents uh, in a separate uh, note. All that the principal can see, not necessarily he has to be in the school. He can see wherever in the globe, wherever he is traveling. Just take your uh, mobile, go to WeChat, and log into your system, and give you a username and password. You can go through everything. And this is a profile management of a teaching staff, or a parents, or a students, or past students, or non-teaching staff. And then parent can update their profile by themselves, except the date of birth and uh, address. They need to get a permission. They can they can give a request, but it has to be approved by the school for change of date of birth and as well as change of address. Other factors they can. Um, they can do by themselves. There is, no, there is no need for them to come to school and give a request, and then the office staff has to update it. The parents can, themselves can do it. For everything, we have a check mark. It has to be approved by the school. Then only it will be uploaded in our server. The can, parents can just save it, uh, clean it, and make the changes and save it, and they can log out. But once you once you approve by the administrator or the person who is authorized by the administrator, and automatically the data will be updated. And here, uh, admission portal, as I told you, the parents can apply for a single child or a, um, twins or a triplet. Not necessarily they have to give the details about the parents every time. Once they give, once they choose single child or a, uh, twins or a triplet, then automatically the system will generate Two applications or single application or three applications separately. And you can see how many applications have been received from the school, how many general, how many existing parents, how many uh, from alumni. All the details will be given. And also, why we need to go for digital fee management? Because it supports the instructions from CBSC and the fee structure is can be. Because what happens is when you are giving a uh, uh, Chalan, some of the parents use the last year chalan and pay the last year fees. And the school office will have to fight with the parents who pay the difference. Now, once you make this a digital fees payment, then once you define the fees for a particular year, they have to pay the fees. They cannot pay less or they cannot pay more. So the system will not accept. So these are the various features, the fee management system. And uh, you can generate reports. You can uh, offer uh, secure payment of more through uh, all kinds of cards and collect these online. And uh, you can also give instructions if they are paying annual fees, you can give 10%. Uh, all that uh, customization can be done. And this is the fee management. You can create the fees, you can schedule the fees, what date, the, uh, what is the last date and what is the grace period, all that you can uh, set in the uh, website. And then ID card, you may not uh, send a separate slip giving the details, the parent have to correct it. The parent have to go to the uh, login the page and they can go to the ID card and they can go through it. They want to edit it, they can edit and say, and they can say, looks good, then automatically it will be uh, printed by the school. And then the student leave management, uh, the parents can apply leave online and teachers also can apply on leave. 
you can set if it is more than 3 days either for the teacher or for the student then the approval has to be given by the principal or the administrators you can set the uh, modes of approval uh, whether you want to keep it 2 days or 3 days everything is possible uh, by changing the admin through the admin mode and also students attendance the teacher can take the attendance uh, in through the mobile and automatically the attendance will be updated and this is very useful to list out the same person attendance at the end of the year to give us certificate in our annual day and the same way for teacher attendance also we can make it and this is uh, homework notes a test and assignment teacher has to just to type it once and post it and it will go to all the parents and similarly the sms uh, communication to the uh, individual class or a whole school or one to five anything you can choose uh, send a, you can choose either to send only in sms or send an sms as well as an email the same message will go to the parent as an sms as also and also as an email to the parent and then the, the parents need not come to school to get a bona fide certificate they can print their own bona fide certificate and you may ask whether it is accepted by other agencies especially the various um, foreign embassies yes it has been tested and proven all the embassies in chennai they are accepting the bona fide online bona fide certificate because we are giving a verification url at the down and the bottom of the certificate they can go to the url and find out the genuinity of the bona fide certificate and then the same way you can create your transfer certificate and the other one is about the um, load of the uh, school bag which is talked about no um, media whether it is a print media or visual media they are they are tearing uh, principles on the schools in pieces uh, by making the children to bring lot of books uh, and there are some schools which are facing legal problem also so parents have gone to the court my son has got this disease only because he has to carry a lot of books etc so we have identified this problem and we have come out with the solution digitally we weigh the weight of the uh, textbooks whatever we prescribe for a particular class and also the notebooks what we have been prescribed and the teacher the moment choose what books to bring tomorrow she will just give a tick then automatically the system will calculate the weight and it will show what is the weight of the bag tomorrow the child should bring it is also very easy for the school to check the uh, weight of the bags uh, randomly and call for the parents see we have already given these are the only books to bring to the school and uh, your child has brought excess so we are not responsible so it is very easy what should be the weight and what is the what will be the weight of a bag on a particular day in a particular week the only thing is the teacher has to uh, tick which books or which notebook the child has to bring the next day and this already told you the lesson plan uh, it is completed it is overdue or it is in progress so either the principal or the hod or the administrators can easily find out the how the academic uh, is being progress in a particular class in a particular section for a particular uh, subject <clears throat> this is completed lesson pending lesson or uh, overdue lessons and the same way library management is also can be done and we can uh, uh, add a building if you are having one more library and you can add a cupboard you can add the rack and add the book add book tag add the author or add the publisher and uh, inventory is also again you can transfer from one block to other block purchase order product details account of information and warehouse what are the brands are available in the school so everything is available here and these are all some of the uh, paper cuttings for online admissions some 5 to 7 years back what we introduced first court introduced online admissions paperless uh, uh, online admission and these are all some of the paper cuttings and biometric and facial i really told you and also you, you can use rfid card or video chat between the parent and the teacher and also there is another beautiful module uh, media library a teacher in a particular class or a particular subject is making some presentation we can save it in the particular class 
and the next year she did not do redo it again or re-prepare it again. The media library, whatever she has saved last year, it will be available. So the children, those are going to come to the particular class year after year, they can make use of the uh, media library. This is another fantastic uh, feature which is available uh, in this. And then the school skies and the Microsoft initiatives because the school skies and Dr. APJ consultancy are channel partners for Microsoft. And the tools like Yammer and Chatbot are used for communication and support. And the entire Azure is owned by Microsoft. And this is what I told you about the Yammer in educational institutions. So two way communications. This is a chat box. Any parent can raise any question. There will be a uh, stored answer. It will come automatically. If there is no answer already stored, I'm sorry. I'm learning about this particular question. I'll come back to you after two days. So the same day evening, the school management will go through any new questions have come and they can give the answer and save it. The next day, if anybody, any public or any parent is asking the same question, they will get the answer. So there are a lot of uh, uh, frequently asked questions. We can put it in our website. And WeChat, if you don't want a two-way communication, uh, making use of Yammer, we can make use of WeChat. We can um, configure WeChat uh, for a particular school. And it will be a one-way communication from the school side to the parents. They can only see uh, what is happening in the school, but they cannot raise any questions. This is all the technical details, how the data is uh, saved, where it is saved, and what is the protection, uh, et cetera. And then we are having a complete team to uh, coin your website, design your website, dynamic website. Everything is only through the website. The school size works through the website and updates uh, websites through the school skies. Calendar update, achievements of a parent. Every parent can update their own achievement of the child and after they approved from the admin, it will be uploaded in the website in a particular uh, student's profile. And these are the group of schools uh, which are using the uh, our website. And as I told you, obviously 65, once you sign up for it, the parents can use official Office 365 as well as the product of Microsoft for their own use or for their official use. These are all the uh, MASF or micro, through Microsoft. Once you sign up for Microsoft Office 365, it's a very, very uh, cheap product. And also the school is, um, licensed for using Microsoft product. So there is no uh, there is no worry about whether there will be inspection from Microsoft, whether they will find me if I'm not using the uh, licensed version or such. Once you sign up for Microsoft Office 365, then everything will fall in line. Then automatically your school is uh, licensed so using licensed software. So these are the benefits of being a Microsoft uh, schools. Helps increasing branding of your school. School can use Microsoft logo for promotion, access to latest Windows upgrades and licenses, access to Microsoft Empower teacher sessions, certifications for teachers, um, then Office 365 for all faculty and students, developer skills, curriculums, access for students, updates for IT infrastructure of the schools, and recognition as MASP school, and will be listed in Microsoft website. We are ready to help for all this, either by myself or by school size. Your email ID is given here, and my phone number is given here, and the support for school size is given here. And we are here to help you anytime, not only for, for IT initiatives, no. but also for uh, your CBSC. Um, requirements and your academic audit or compliance audit, you are most welcome. I thank you once again for all of you to joining us. It is a pleasure to meet all of you online. Thank you, Ajit sir, for that uh, <coughs> very enlightening session. And I thank all the participants. Please do not worry about or those who missed the session. We will definitely send you on the Zoom link for you to review or share it with your friends. There were not many questions. 
there was just a couple of questions we will like we would like to take that offline we'll probably send you the uh, mail for answering those questions and uh, like uh, dr ajit was saying please do write to us if you would want a one to one consultation with dr ajit and from school sky side we'd be very glad to offer you a two month free trial we can also provide you online training on how to use microsoft tools or what are the different various packages that microsoft offers as well as how you can use school sky intuitively all you need to do is just type in and send us a mail on what exactly you would want